Yo, how's it going guys? This is Lesky, and in this video we'll be taking a look at a brand new game mode EA is adding in FC25. It's a 5v5 mode that they are calling Rush. This is going to be one of the biggest additions to FC25 and I'm excited to see what Rush is all about. EA released a Rush deep dive article where they explain in detail how the game mode will work. I won't be covering every little detail in this video, just the parts that I think are the most important and interesting. So if you guys want, make sure to check out that Rush Deep Dive article on their website. Rush is going to be playable across various game modes, which are clubs, ultimate team, career mode, and kickoff. For those of you who are new to the channel or haven't seen any of my videos, I want to mention that I'm a clubs content creator, so a lot of my opinions and thoughts will be related more to clubs rather than the other modes. So as I said, Rush is going to be a 5v5 game mode, and there's going to be an AI goalkeeper, and then the other four outfield players are going to be real players. And in clubs and an ultimate team, you will be player locked to those players, while in kickoff and manager career mode, you can control the entire team. And in my opinion, Rush will be most popular with the clubs community because it just makes sense. It's already very similar to 11 v 11 clubs where you're all player locked to your own build unless you are playing any and in clubs you can make your own build edit the attributes the height the weight the play styles and you can customize your build to how you want to play in rush however it will kind of suck for the people that play goalkeeper as their main position in clubs because it will be all ais in rush and it would be a really good game mode to go into and actually learn and improve as a goalkeeper but one thing that will prevent is all the trolls that try and play goalkeeper or just aren't very experienced at goalkeeper that kind of just ruined the fun for everyone. We're going to start by looking at how the kickoff will work in Rush and they call it race to ball where there will be two cannons on either side of the pitch and one of them will shoot a ball across the halfway line and there's going to be varying different powers and heights so it creates some unpredictability and it almost kind of reminds me of dodgeball where the balls are all in the center and then the two teams are lined up and then you all just race to the ball so it's kind of similar to that in a way i did show you guys a video as an example not too sure why the video is so laggy but that will kind of give you guys a visual on how it's going to look and i think a big reason why they decided to do it like this is because there's not going to be any halftime so you're not going to switch side and then the other team gets the kickoff and i believe the match timer is going to be a total of seven minutes and no halftime switch which we'll get into more detail in a little bit the next thing i want to look at is the rules and regulations so the pitch size and the pitch lines and here is a picture showing the difference between the 11 v 11 pitch and the rush pitch it's quite a bit smaller here's the match length and tie breaking and as I said, rush matches are going to be seven minutes long. And it says there are no half times. And then it says the clock remains paused while the ball is out of play. When the clock hits zero, the team with the most goals claims victory as every match must produce a winner. Matches tied at the end of regulation time go to a two minute and 20 second golden goal extra time, followed by one on one penalty shootouts if the tie remains we'll cover the penalty shootouts in more detail later on in this deep dive so that sounds like a lot of fun and pressure when it comes down to those dribble up or they're calling them one-on-one -on -one penalty shootouts um if any of y'all have seen mls back in the day they used to have those dribble ups instead of penalties and it was actually pretty fun to watch um, and then it also says our buzzer beater rule ensures that if a shot is in flight as the clock hits zero, the game continues until the play concludes. Whether by a goalkeeper save, the ball going out of play, a goal being scored, or an opponent blocking or intercepting the ball, adding to the thrill of those final moments. Additionally, if a penalty kick is awarded in the final seconds, a brief extension period past the zero minute mark 
is granted, ensuring that the fouled player gets the chance to take a shot. The player cannot pass or lose possession during this grace period or else the match will end right away. So the buzzer beater addition, I think, is actually going to be really cool. And you could have some really um, interesting and exciting moments at the end of matches. Now let's move on to the offside rules where I do have some video examples to show you guys. So it's going to be different than a real football match. Now there is going to be attacking third offsides and you can see in those video examples what I'm talking about. Um, once you're past that attacking third, it's basically acting like the halfway line in a real football match. So that's nice because I think if they had the normal halfway line, it would just be kind of weird and congested. Um, I think it opens up the play a little bit more with the attacking third. Up next is blue cards and the advantage rule. It says in rush, there are no red cards. Instead, players who commit a serious foul or deny a goal scoring opportunity receive a blue card and are sidelined for one minute. So this reminds me of indoor football, soccer, whatever you want to call it, where they hand out blue cards and then they go into the penalty box or also hockey kind of has the same thing. And then it says the blue card timer below the sanctioned player's name pauses for out of play moments and decreases by 15 seconds for each goal conceded by their team. So I think that's also a nice little addition. It just once you get scored on, um, 15 seconds get taken off of your counter so your team just doesn't get absolutely pummeled while they're a man down. Then it says if the blue card timer exceeds the remaining match time, it carries over into extra time. Players can re-enter the pitch once the timer ends, either during live play or a set piece. At least two outfield players must always be present on the pitch for each side. Consequently, if a team receives a third blue card while two players are already sidelined, they forfeit the match, which is actually pretty crazy. And then just being down two players is such a huge disadvantage anyways. 2v4, that is probably not a good look for your squad. And then it says accumulating two yellow cards results in a blue card and the yellow card count resets when a blue card is issued. Goalkeepers are exempt from receiving yellow or blue cards. Then they go into talking about the advantage rule and it's been adapted to help ensure fair play and rush allowing for delayed card issuance based on the outcome of the advantage played, particularly in breakaway or one-on-one -on -one situations. As with the rest of our rules, our goal here is to provide a fun, fair, and fast-flowing experience. They also mention that there's going to be no substitutions in Rush. And then when it comes to stamina, your long-term stamina will not be depleted, only your short-term stamina. So I'm pretty sure that means the stamina attribute actually won't make a difference. Like in clubs, when it comes to making a Rush build, I don't think there's going to be any point of upgrading your stamina because the stamina attribute works for your long-term stamina, not your short-term stamina. I'm not 100% on that, but I think that's how it works. For set pieces in rush, there's not gonna be any direct free kicks, but there will be indirect free kicks, which just basically means if you played Volta, it's basically the same as that, where your guy puts his hand on the ball and then just you pass it. I don't think you can shoot off of that. It basically just has to be a pass. Actually, I think in Volta, you could even dribble off of it but I don't think you can actually do that in rush. And I have some videos of the indirect free kick. And then there's the corner kick, which is actually bringing back like the old school style of corner kick. The only thing that I worry here is will the dead ball play style actually make a difference or is the dead ball play style going to be completely useless? And same with relentless. If stamina doesn't matter, is relentless going to make a difference? Is that going to be a pointless play style that you shouldn't have on? Um, it seems like you can kind of just easily control the cursor on the corner kicks, but it would be pretty cool if dead ball just somehow made the delivery better or it was easier to control where you want the ball to go. And then the next one is what they call one-on-one -on -one penalty kicks, which I've already mentioned. Um, I like to call them more dribble ups. Um, and it says, with rush penalty shootouts, we're looking to build on the excitement and intensity of 11v11 shootouts. During regular time, a penalty kick is awarded to any player fouled within the penalty box, giving them a chance to beat the goalkeeper one-on-one. -on -one. 
If the game goes to a shootout after a goal is extra time, players from both sides alternate taking one-on-one -on -one penalty kicks, with each player having 10 seconds to take their shot. During shootouts, only the kick taker and the goalkeeper will be involved in the play, while the other players will spectate. We're going to move on to some social features that they added into Rush. The first one is two-player celebrations. So after you score a goal, you can run into a teammate and you can do a celebration with them. If you want to avoid that, just don't go near a teammate or just put in a input of any celebration and it can do a solo celebration. They've added quick chat and tactical request. As part of the rush experience, we're introducing a new quick chat feature to all online locked to player modes. This social feature is intended to promote team communication and camaraderie through simple quick messages. So it's actually going to be in normal clubs matches, I believe, as well. Using the directional buttons, players can easily send messages like nice, thanks, sorry, and unlucky to their teammates. Kind of reminds me of Rocket League if y'all have played that game, which can actually be kind of toxic with those and people can spam them. So we'll see how that works. We hope that quick chat enables players to swiftly express reactions and emotions following key moments in a match from acknowledging a well-placed assist to commiserating over a missed opportunity. Sidelined players can still send quick messages and reactions as well. Players can also request actions from teammates while not in possession of the ball. They can send commands like pass, cross, through, or shoot using any of the buttons that correspond to those actions while on the ball. Messages like run, come short, or press the ball can also be sent using their respective buttons. AI teammates will also try to respond to those requests accordingly. Our overall goal with quick chat and tactical requests is to give players more social options while also giving them more control over AI teammates as well. And that, again, I think will also just be in normal 11v11 clubs matches. Like when you call for a ball, instead of just having that ball icon over your head like they've had for years, it will actually say what input you're putting. There's also a ping system, and this is actually pretty interesting. In response to early feedback from our internal play test, we introduced a ping system to better facilitate tactical communication in Rush, specifically designed for lock to player online modes. Pings allow players without the ball to flick the right stick input to signal their intentions to teammates. Inspired by the directed runs visual for consistency, these signals are visually represented by arrows flowing from the player and fading in the direction of the intended action. And I kind of like that um, arrow ping system thing. It could be pretty good, for, especially for randoms, just going into like a drop-in and you don't have any communication with people, you can kind of tell them that you're making a run into that space and they can just kind of be aware of that. Before I wrap up this video, there's some other things I'd like to show you guys. There's going to be a Rush training center that you can go in and basically learn how to play the game mode. And here's a picture of what the Rush Training Center will look like. When it comes to camera settings, it says they added four new camera angles specifically designed for Rush. There is Broadcast, Tactical, Pro, and End-to-End. -end. Not too sure which one I will use, but I honestly am interested in the End-to-End -end camera. I do think it could actually be pretty good in this game mode. In Rush, EA is adding something called AR Coach, which means Augmented Reality Coach, which provides real-time visual guidance to help improve players' decision-making and positioning during Rush matches. And then it says, by default, the AR Coach is enabled for players on beginner or amateur difficulty settings, while those playing on semi-pro or higher will find it disabled, but can easily toggle it on or off in the Visual Settings tab. Then it says the guidance comes in four main forms. Offensive support is indicated by a blue circle, defensive support by an orange square, counterattack threat by orange arrows, and defensive gap alert by an orange rectangle, each meant to improve gameplay, understanding, and strategic execution on the pitch. And I think this is just kind of to help when it comes to, obviously they just said the positioning, um, but there's going to be a lot of people that just want to attack. No one really wants to play defense. There is going to be need to be like a lot of rotation. Um, someone's always going to need to be covering. There might be someone cherry picking, um, waiting to just get a ball sent to them and then counter and get like a one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. So 
Um, just being aware of these spaces on the pitch is kind of what that's um, helping you with. So that's everything I wanted to discuss about the new 5v5 game mode. I specifically think the club's community will love this and I can't wait to try it out and make content for you guys. Depending on how successful this game mode is, I think it has a lot of potential to become a competitive mode. It's going to require a lot of teamwork, communication, and coordination to be successful. Let me know what y'all think about Rush in the comments. Hit that like button on this video for me. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button on my channel if you haven't already. Y'all have a great rest of y'all's day and peace out.